In today's video, you are going to learn how to take your steer negotiation to the next level. If you're new to this channel, I'm Tara, and on this channel, we empower you with as many tools as possible to take ownership of your health and your overall mobility. And all that said, today you're going to learn how to advance your steer negotiation, i.e. ascending, descending stairs, from the up with the good, down with the bad technique to what we call a step over step technique. So what do I mean by that? Most of you in rehab learned kind of a step two where you lead with your strong leg and when you're coming down, you lead with your weaker leg, meaning you step down, bring, then bring the stronger leg down, step the weaker leg down, then bring the stronger leg down. Now, the reason for that is there's less load requirement on the involved leg. But what we're gonna do in today's video is for those of you that have been doing that for a while and you're pretty comfortable with that and your balance is pretty good and you're getting adequate strength back in your legs, we're gonna advance that to that step over step technique. But the first step is kind of breaking that whole movement down and figuring out what are all the components of actually stepping up with a weaker leg that you have to be able to master before you kind of put it all together. And one is you have to be able to lift your weaker leg up onto the step. I'm starting with a lower step here just to kind of demonstrate kind of all the components, right? So you got to be able to lift that leg up. Next, once that leg is up, you have to be able to shift your weight forward. That's a key one. What a lot of people do is they skip over kind of relearning that and it just leads to frustration because what you try and do is try and kind of push up without actually getting your body weight centered over that leg. Now keep in mind, there's a variety of reasons why some of you do that. You really have to be in tune with your body and figure out why you're doing that. Some people, it's because they're so used to not putting weight directly over that leg that the only way they know how to kind of load that leg is with the body not over the top of that leg. And that may work with walking, but when you come to doing stairs, stairs will really reveal those little kind of compensations that you make when you're walking. And you really wanna make sure you master those with walking before you try and take this onto stairs, okay? So that's one reason. The other reason that some people uh, kind of can't get this weight shift forward is because you're using a synergy pattern. So again, you just kind of have to be aware of your body and what's going on with your body so you know what exercises to focus on, okay? So an extensor synergy pattern, which I talk about quite a bit on this channel, is when the hip, knee, and ankle all link up together, and whenever you do a movement at one of those joints, all three of those joints move at the same time. Uh, an extensor synergy pattern really does interfere with being able to step up with a weaker leg. Why is that? There's a lot of demand on that knee extension. And so sometimes, this isn't true all the time, but in some cases, your brain will just kind of go back to one of those what we call primitive patterns because it knows it needs to be able to get you up that step and uh, straighten that knee out. So what is that pattern? It's knee extension with hip extension and foot pointing. That's an extensor pattern. So visualize that. So when you go to extend your knee, what's that gonna do? Is this gonna push you backwards, okay? So that's another thing that may interfere with being able to step up with your uh, involved leg. So that's that weight shift component. And now well, the last thing on the going up steps that is, it's important is what is the movement pattern that you do need to be able to facilitate? You have to be able to push down, straightening your knee out and straightening your hip out, but dorsiflexing your ankle. So it's hip extension, knee extension with ankle dorsiflexion. This is plantar flexion at the ankle, this is dorsiflexion. You have to be able to dorsiflex and push up. So that's ascending stairs. So those are going to be the exercises that we're going to focus on as far as going up steps. Now, as far as coming down, what's going on if this is the weaker leg and now we're trying to undo or not do the down with the bad, right? So now we're going to step down with our stronger leg, meaning the bad leg or the weaker leg or the involved leg is the leg that stays on the upper step. So stepping the stronger leg 
down. Now, what's going on in this case that is probably the most important to master when you're going to progress to going down steps leading with your stronger leg is one, the foot is behind you. Now, I talk about this quite a bit. It's super important. Uh, most people just completely underestimate the challenge of that if you have any type of sensory or motor deficit in a leg is when that leg is out of sight, it's a completely different scenario in getting that leg to work. So getting comfortable having a leg that you don't have great strength in or you don't have great sensation in, having it behind you and kind of like out of sight, right? So that's number one. The other thing that's going on is eccentric, right? Learning how to keep the quadricep muscles active and lengthening at the same time. That's a different type of muscle performance and it absolutely needs to be practiced before you go on to going downstairs and we're gonna do that today. And then what else is going on is you have to have adequate ankle dorsiflexion. So what does this mean? Any of you that are in a carbon brace, uh, carbon fiber brace where there's like a shell on the front of it, not going to work with that brace on. You can do it, but I've actually had people with that type of brace actually break the brace when they're going down steps. So that's very important. If you're in a solid AFO, meaning there's no joint at the ankle and it's just stuck in one position, also going to be challenging. Some of you get away with it, but your leg kind of has to rotate and do some kind of strange maneuvering because the ankle can't dorsiflex right? So that's in super important. Some of you just aren't going to be able to do this because of the type of bracing that you're in. But for the rest of you, what does it mean? It means you have to have adequate ankle dorsiflexion. Now, some of you are, can get around that, but it's never going to feel super comfortable because you're, you're almost going to, your foot is going to feel like it's just kind of the leaning tower of Pisa. It's not going to feel controlled because your foot is pointed and it's kind of like you're, all you're doing is kind of tipping that tree forward and you don't have the ankle muscles to help control that motion down. So what is the ankle muscle? It's that plantar flexion muscle, the muscle that points the foot, again doing an eccentric. It's staying contracted, that calf muscle in the back, but it's also lengthening at the same time. Again, something that needs to be practiced, um, but we'll be practicing the knee eccentric and the ankle eccentric in the same exercise, but just very important to know that if you don't have good control of the muscle back there, it's going to feel a little uncomfortable going downstairs with this type of a technique. And then one other thing that for some of you is a big deal, for others of you it's not a big deal, is what we call dissociating. Now you're dissociating the left and the right on the way up and the way down, but it's usually if you, so dissociation is when your legs are, each side of your body are doing different things at the same time. Sometimes after a stroke that gets a little jumbled, and whatever one leg does, the other leg wants to do the same thing. And so, yes, it is a problem going up and descending, but I find that it's more of a problem with going downstairs for a lot of people. And I think, I don't know for sure, <laughs> sometimes I just have to kind of be curious about what I think might be going on in someone's head or what their brain is trying to do, because it's not always clear. So this is just my opinion, is that when you go down, you think like, oh, I'm landing on a strong leg and you kind of take it for granted. Like this is my strong leg. I should just be able to land on it and support my body weight. And when that doesn't happen, it can create some panic. Now, why wouldn't that happen on the way down is when you go to load this leg, this leg is bent. And so this leg wants to bend. So for some of you, that is a huge problem. So working on dissociating left and right, especially when you're standing on a strong leg, which a lot of you don't focus a ton of time on because uh, you want to be able to, you know that your probably bigger problem is that you can't stand on your weaker leg. But equally important is being able to relearn how to stand on your strong leg and have your other leg bent. Okay, so I know that was a lot. 
I strongly recommend that you listen through that explanation one more time before you watch the exercises so that you can pick the exercises that are going to be the most valuable. I don't think anyone that watches this video should be doing all the exercises that we're going through today. So having a good understanding of where your specific problems are or breakdowns are in that entire movement will help you to kind of skip over some of the exercises. So I hope all that made sense, but now let's go ahead and dive into the exercise routine. Okay, so I'm gonna try and mark the leg. This is the involved leg with a piece of tape. All right, and step one is using your hand, using your hand, okay, you can use your strong hand, to lift your weaker leg up onto a step. Remember I said first component is being able to lift that leg up onto a step. The best place to start when relearning a movement, not the best place, but one place you can start when relearning a movement is to do the movement in reverse. Take it into the position that you want it to be in and then bring it back down. So foot up on a step, using your strong leg and strong arm, hold on if you need to, you're gonna try and stand up. Okay, for a lot of you, that's not gonna be a super big deal because we're standing, you're standing on your stronger leg. Remember, this is your involved leg, okay? So you're gonna have that foot up there. It helps to do it in sitting because it's just easier to lift your leg up and put it up there. And then you're just gonna try and work on sliding it down. Sit back down, hand, lift it up, push, stand up. try and bring it back down. Once you can get good at that, then my suggestion is you start with a low step. That's why I'm starting with this low step and hold on if you need to for this. Remember, when you're relearning a movement, holding on might be your best tool because what it does is it just calms your brain down a little bit. If you have any spasticity, it's not gonna make it interfere as much. So to start, just hold on. And you're just gonna work on lifting the leg up, okay? Now, this is what I would consider like a, a, a functional movement. So if the movement quality is not perfect, that's okay because being able to go up and down stairs with multiple different techniques is a valuable functional skill. And so if it's not perfect, that's totally okay. So what do I mean by that? If you need to lean a little bit, rotate your body a little bit to kind of get that leg up. I think there are certain scenarios where that, where that is 100% acceptable. You know, I'm kind of like in uh, a moderate, I'm in the middle when it comes to like quality movement. Always needs to be balanced with actual quality of life. So this is one of those instances where I do think the trade-off is worth it in order to be able to relearn how to go up and downstairs with various techniques. All right, so lean, do whatever you can. You're just trying to get that foot up there. Now, for those of you that have been around for a while, this video is already gonna be super long, so I'm not gonna show it, but using the resistance band belt is a great tool as well. It's a band, goes around your waist, attaches to your ankle, and the resistance bands kind of help to pull the leg up if you absolutely can't do this. But most of you, if you're at this level and you're trying to go up and down stairs with this type of technique, if you just go to a lower step for now, and you might have to stay there for a while, totally acceptable, right? Just go to a lower step. We're talking about progress, not perfection. Don't rush it and just work on that lift. Any movement in that direction where this leg is coming off the floor is progression towards that movement of being able to go up onto a six inch or an eight inch step. So that's the lifting component, all right? Next, we need that weight shifting component. Remember, I said you step up, you gotta weight shift forward, right? And for most of you, you definitely wanna check this off your list first. Can you put your involved leg out in front of you? Your weaker leg, can you put it out in front of you? And can you advance this leg all the way past? That's a huge test. If you cannot do that, that's what you need to work on. And I would not try and go up and down stairs with your involved leg. Involved leg out in front of you. Can you step your other foot all the way past, right? 
This is the anterior weight shift that you need, that forward weight shift, ankle dorsiflexion, loading the leg. Can you load the leg and flex your ankle forward at the same time, meaning can you move your body forward? Super, super important. If you can't do this, I would not, not attempt stairs stepping up with your strong leg. Some of you might get away with it and you might leave that in the comments that you do. That's fine. I just don't think it's safe to be doing it if you do not have the skill. Okay? So you're loading that leg and then you're stepping past. All right. Once you can do that, the next is can you load that leg and actually generate the power to raise your body up off the ground and step the other foot forward. So it's the same exercise we just did. We're just adding a little bit more load by going lifting up off the ground, right? So same movement, you're still doing that anterior weight shift, that forward weight shift, still stepping this foot past the other foot, but going up, kind of like going uphill, okay? So getting really good at that anterior weight shift, hip and knee extension, step. Okay, so that's covering two of the things that I talked about at the beginning. It's the anterior weight shift, ankle dorsiflexion with hip and knee extension, hip straightening, knee straightening. Once you can master all of that, then you want to do the same thing onto a bigger step holding on. Make sure you hold on. What's going to most likely happen is that you're going to use your hand to pull. And I absolutely think that that is an important first step. Use your hand to start. Just know that you're using your hand to pull yourself up and you might not be activating the muscles in the leg as much. And then the goal is, can you do it without pulling? To really, really master stairs with this step-over-step -step technique, you want to be activating all the right muscles at the right time, getting that coordination. The starting point is just to hold on, kind of active assist. We call this kind, I would call this kind of like a bottom up approach, meaning that you're kind of passively doing it because you're using your arm, but going through the motion of it is absolutely a stepping stone to being able to relearn that movement pattern. So hold on, pull yourself forward, get that feeling of that anterior weight shift with that hip and knee extension when you step up. Okay, now we're going to move on to the stepping down component. And remember what I said, probably one of the most important things is that you have the range of motion in the ankle. So can you, this is the involved leg, step forward and just stretch that ankle. You want to do it with your knee straight because that's important when you initially start to step down. You need that range. And can you do it with your knee bent? You need a minimum of 15 degrees. Call this zero degrees or neutral. So what, what most people would consider a 90 degree bend in the ankle, we kind of call that neutral. 15 to 20 degrees is necessary for going downstairs to feel normal. Remember, anything less than that, you're going to kind of get this tipping motion where you're just kind of tipping off of your toes. So leg uh, straight and knee bent, stretching that heel cord out. And you just want to hold it for about one minute. Most stretches you want to hold for about a minute. Okay. And then next, what did I talk about is that eccentric, that knee and ankle eccentric control. So for that, again, you want that leg behind you. Talked about that at the beginning, why that's important, but that's also a great way to work on that eccentric. All right. And then you want to shift your weight back mostly over your back leg. And you're kind of doing like a little squat. You can step this foot back. It doesn't need to be that far out in front. Um, you want most of your weight over this back leg and then back up. That's what the motion should look like down and back up. So you shouldn't be falling backwards or pushing backwards. And you, uh, it's not necessarily like a straight down and straight back up. We're kind of loading that leg and straightening it back out. The key component is loading that leg and then straightening it back out. 
All right, and then now I have a resistance band on. So what we're doing is we're just adding a little bit load. Remember, when you're going downstairs, there's gonna be a lot of load on those muscles. So this is a way to safely add load before you actually go to stairs. And same thing, you're gonna go down, you can see the band hooked under my foot and then around the opposite shoulder and then back up. Really learning that eccentric control. That band is pulling you down. You wanna control that and feel like when you unlock your knee, you're not just crumbling to the ground, which for some of you, if you use a lot of spasticity to walk, this might reveal that, and that means that you're not ready to do stairs yet. So just because you can stand on your leg doesn't necessarily mean you have the control when your knee is unlocked. A lot of you already know that, but I just cannot stress enough the safety component of this and making sure you have all these components. But again, bending it, when you unlock it, does that band make you crumble to the ground, or are you able to control it, and can you push it back straight? And then once you have all that, starting with a low step, stepping down and holding it. Two very important components of this part of the progression. Starting with a low step, now we're working on that dissociation. Can you support your body weight on your strong leg while this one is bent? If not, what has a tendency to happen is because you feel like this leg is gonna buckle, you, you try and bring this leg off the step too quickly a lot of times, and it does throw you off balance. Some of you end up catching your toe on the edge of this, uh, on the corner of the step. So very important. Can you land, support your body weight on this leg, and keep that leg bent and feel comfortable with that position? Very, very important. And this is something you definitely wanna be able to do from a tall step before you attempt stairs in a safe environment, holding on. For those of you that have stairs in your house, a lot of times what we do is we just practice this on the bottom step for a long time. Really making sure you're comfortable with that before you actually start at the top of a staircase and try and descend. Just work on the bottom step in your home if you have stairs, and then step down and just hold it, all right? Then once you can do that, having multiple height steps is super valuable of being able to now start to put it all together, step down and step past. Okay, so if you have um, stairs in your home, making some kind of a step that's halfway between and working on that whole sequence with kind of like now what would be like half steps. So you're going to step down and down. And then that is it for this video. As a reminder, we do have handouts, PDF handouts that go along with all of these videos. This video does have a PDF handout with all of these steps listed out with pictures and descriptions of each step. To gain access to that, you do have to be a gold or a monthly member. To learn more about our membership programs and to sign up, you can visit rehab-hq.com. But one thing that there is no charge for, and that is subscribing to this channel so that you can get notified whenever I upload an educational video. It really does help this channel to reach more people, and we always appreciate your support. I enjoyed spending time with you all today, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good day.